we are here at the legendary 17th hole at TPC Sawgrass, home of the Players' Championship. Meet John and Pete and their special guests and enjoy four days of VIP access March 10th through the 13th. It's going to include two days of live trading with all the Market Rebellion analysts. You're going to get to meet John, Pete, and special guests. We do have limited seats. There's only 10 seats available. Sign up below. Make sure you get here. We want to see you at the Players' Championship. Good morning. I'm Pete Nigeri, and this is the Take for Market Rebellion, finishing up a wild ride week once again. And yes, inflation, that was the focus. That was what everything was about yesterday. It was interesting, however, because you look at the markets and there really wasn't a huge reaction in the first half of the session. Second half of the session, a little bit of a different story. As a matter of fact, you look and relatively flatlined early on and then, you know, first half of the day for the Dow and then suddenly the bottom fell out and it just continued to accelerate to the downside, finishing the day down over 500 points. Pretty significant hit for the Dow. That's about one and a half percent. What we really got hit with, however, was the Nasdaq. And you take a look over at that Nasdaq in the second half of the day there, losing about 300 points. That's about a 2%, a little bit more than a 2% loss on the day. So significant selling, very hard pressure as we got into the second half of the day. Crude oil started the day up at around 91, did give back some and got finished in the 89s, call it the mid 89s, but uh, been something we've been watching for a while. A little bit of that movement to the up and a little bit of a pullback here. And we were at 93, not terribly long ago, pulled back. Got a little bit more to talk about about that when we get into what's going on today. So I look over at the 10 year. That really did say it all for us yesterday. That was a big spike, 2%. We're sitting right there and everybody's looking at that and they're just staring at it because that's the highest levels we've seen since 2019. Just to give you a little persp perspective there. So did shake the markets and that was certainly something that was, was moving the markets around. Technology, under fire. Semiconductors were under fire. Consumer discretion, that was under fire. You look at financials, everything was moving to the downside, but financials weren't nearly as bad, neither was energy when we're looking at the big scheme. But when you look at these sectors, certainly there were sectors that absolutely were getting punished yesterday and getting pressed to, to, to the downside. That's that reflection that you see in the NASDAQ with that 300 point move in that second half of the day. So I said semiconductors were under pressure, down about 3%. NXPI, getting hit. Zebra, getting hit. You look at Qualcomm, getting hit. A lot of these names just moving to the downside anywhere from 5%, 8%, 5% across the board, selling. AMD, another one of those. Marvell, another one of those. Then you throw in the big tech names, as I mentioned, and technology under fire. Then you look at Microsoft, you look at Apple, you look at Tesla, all down relatively hard. So that combination really was what was pushing the markets to the downside. That doesn't mean there weren't things that were working. And certainly when you look at Disney, had a very, very strong day, especially given the backdrop of what we were seeing uh, across the board everywhere else. Micron, an interesting move to the upside as most of the semiconductors were just getting hammered, even just out of sentiment, sometimes we'll see all of them moving to the downside. So there's a few that stood out, definitely. Kellogg's yesterday, that was something that stood out. Then you look at Datadog, that's a name John was talking about, some of the unusual option activity we had seen in there. Wow, that was a bang, as John would say, or, or a giddy up, as I would say. Definitely a nice, big, strong move to the upside, throwing a little bit of Boeing, maybe Zscaler and O'Reilly. We don't talk about that name very much, but O'Reilly having a really, really nice day yesterday. So as we get into today, really kind of quiet in the free markets. Yeah, we were down a little bit, both the you know, very early at least we were looking and they started as some of those losses down 75 on the Dow, down about 35 points on the NASDAQ, a little bit of a recovery off of that. And then all of a sudden, before you know it, you're looking at the Dow and it's been shifting around a little bit. First hour of trade, it's up about triple digits, not with the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ still was under a little bit of pressure in the red, but nothing huge, down maybe 20 or 30 points. So that's really what the first hour of trade looked like. Then you look over at crude, recapturing 91. Then we look at the 10-year, 
staying right there at two. A little bit of that ebb and flow. We're seeing a little bit of, of, of that for sure. Look at that volatility index. Yesterday, we had that range, and that range was very, very large, but closed near the highs of the day, not quite the highs of the day, but right around 24. It was up almost up to 25, and we did have some big volumes yesterday, a little over 49 million contracts trading in our world, the options world, so a big day. We go through, we've got the earnings once again. You look at interesting shifts there as well. Look at something like Under Armour. It was up 7% initially, and then it was moving into ne negative territory. Zillow, pretty interesting. So across the board, we're continuing on with the earnings, but obviously a lot of focus now on the Fed, how many moves, how big are some of those moves going to be? That's going to be a lot of the conversation we're going to be having for a long time now, as we've heard some of these, the, the inflation report and all the, the concerns that people have since that. So sectors early on, energy was up 1%, up nearly 2% in the first hour or so. Consumer staples just kind of hanging around about a half a percent or so. Technology did move off of that that area where it was trading somewhere closer to flat, uh, just about a quarter of a percent or so here or there. Semiconductors remain down about half a percent, but we're starting to improve a little bit. So tech was going a little bit lower. And then you look at semiconductors pulling up a little bit higher, sort of moving around with that's why you're seeing the NASDAQ trading sort of in that range, call it down 30 or 40 points to somewhere close to flat. So had some movers. Newell, that's one of them, up about 9%. Mohawk, up about 3.5%. We got some strength places. You look over at a lot of the, like what we call the beta energy names, and then XOP is a really good reference point. Those individual names, though, you look at PSX, you look at Oxy, you look at some of these names, having a great day moving to the upside. Baker Hughes, another one of those names. Then you look at Datadog. Datadog, up 3%. Wow. Zoom, up 3%. I mentioned an Under Armour. It started off pretty decent, and or very decent, and it started to move into negative territory. That's down decent, about a half, seven percent or so to the downside there. Illumina getting hit for about a three percent loss. Lulu not so bad, but in the negative territory. Not a lot to to really comment on as far as some of the what we were seeing to the downside. Nothing huge outside of some of the names that I just mentioned. So I got two unusuals, and we've got a great halftime report today. Going to be in the first half of that report. Then it looks like a lot more shifting around it. And a lot of great things we're going to be covering. Al Michaels, who loves the markets and is actually calling the game for NBC. That's going to be pretty exciting. I know Scott's been talking about that and Gunlock. And it's going to be a really, really a fun show. So look forward to seeing you then. But before that, Pinterest, number one. Now, that was trading right around 27, just a little bit higher than that. We had a buyer of the February 28 calls, so giving yourselves just a week, but the February 28 calls, 4,800 of those between 56 cents and up all the way up to about 95 cents. Interesting to see that. That's a stock you know, we all know, has been uh, in the news quite a bit over the last month, month or so, for sure. Now, one of uh, Farmer Jim's favorite names, Cleveland Cliffs. That one's pretty interesting as well. 3,400 of the March 4 calls, so March 4th. So these are the 21 and a half calls. They're buying them for 64 cents up to about 68 cents. So call it right in the middle there. Maybe it's 66 cents on an average price there. 3,400 of those trading as well. So we're seeing materials, seeing stuff in energy. Energy just continues to be that sector where the options markets have absolutely been leading us for a while now. Follow the, the smart money, right? That's the book. That's what we're seeing. And that's what we do each and every day. Folks, have a great day of trading and a great weekend and good luck with the Super Bowl, whoever you're pulling for.